Welcome to this new series on architectural simplification. In this episode, I'll be talking about predictable failover latency and why having a cluster of CockroachDB nodes may be preferable to having a primary and secondary failover setup. The secondary will be an asynchronous replica of the primary. In front of that will be a load balancer, which points an application which simulates a user to the primary and then I'll simulate a failure in the primary and I'll fail over to the secondary. Next, I'll move on to a cockroach DB setup where I'll have a three node cluster, which will actually represent a three region setup. The text primary and secondary here is just semantic. There isn't a primary or secondary database node in cockroach DB, they're all the same. And what I mean by that is each node can handle both reads and writes. Every node in the cluster will house a number of replicas which are distributed or replicated across the other nodes. What we're looking at in this example is a three node cluster with a replication factor of three, i.e. there are three replicas replicated three times across the nodes. This allows us to survive the outage of any one of those nodes and remain online. Let's assume we're in a scenario whereby we've lost one of the nodes. Let's say we've lost node one. Node two and node three have all of the replicas that exist on node one. The data is safe and still replicated across the two nodes such that when node one does come back online, it can be updated from the copies that exist on node two and node three. This is just to show that I will set up a primary region and then I'll be able to achieve predictable failover latencies by having a secondary region configured. In front of that will be a load balancer which will balance requests from a simulated user. So without further ado, let's get cracking. I'll start with the before scenario. I'll start with a Postgres primary and secondary setup. So I'll run Docker Compose here, which specifies some common functionality for all Postgres instances. It's Postgres 15.2 Alpine. There's a user called user and the database name will be called Postgres. The Postgres primary node will write to the PG HBA, the host-based authentication file, the values that will allow the replica to connect to it. And then we'll set a bunch of configurations that will allow the primary to replicate to the secondary. Finally, I set up the replica node, which will be running PG base backup to replicate from the replication slot that we'll create on the primary. So I'll connect to the primary node now and I'll create a table into which I'll insert some data. I'll create a simple product table with a name and a price and I'll insert a bunch of values into it. So there's five values there. Then I'll connect to the secondary node over here. And if we select the count of everything from the product table, we'll see that the replication has already happened. I ran some initialization scripts when I created the Compose infrastructure, and that has got replication going for us already. Next, I'll spin up a load balancer. For this, I just created a simple TCP proxy, and I'll initially point to the primary node, and then I'll run an application. And this application's connection string will point to the TCP address that is exposed by the proxy that I've got running over here. And all the code does is connects to the database, pings it to make sure there's a connection, and then starts a read write loop. So every 50 milliseconds, we'll be writing a new product into the database and we'll be reading it out again. That's all it needs to do. That's running away happily now. And now I'll take down the primary node. And what we'll see very quickly, the application is no longer happy. We're gonna get a bunch of errors now because every 50 milliseconds, the application is gonna be trying to write to the database and it's gonna be failing. So what I'll do now, because I would have been replicating changes to the secondary, I can now hop on to the replica and promote it to be primary. So that's promoted now. And all I have to do now is switch over my load balancer to point to the secondary. And now we carry on happily. At this point, it makes sense to summarize what we've done with the primary failover scenario. The failover was successful, but now what? How do we get back to the primary? Do we want to get back to the primary? In a real world environment, we would now be running on secondary infrastructure, which might not be as capable as the primary infrastructure. And now we've got no replication happening. Do we now promote the primary to be a replica? There's a couple of decisions that you need to make and all of which will require some work. And when the primary went away, there could have been replicas that were queued up ready to be replicated across to the secondary that couldn't be replicated because the primary went down. How do we get that data back from the primary? And that's not to mention the human cost of this setup. In this scenario, I realized there was an issue and I fixed it quickly, principally because I caused the issue. In the real world, a resolution would only begin once humans were made aware that there was an issue, whatever time of day or night that might be. And let's hope that those on call know the runbook, i.e. how to perform a failover and have access to perform it. 
And finally, you need to make a decision as to whether your replication happens synchronously or asynchronously. In this example, I was running asynchronously because it was easy for me to set up. Synchronous replication will need to slow everything down because the replicas are done synchronously. The application will write to the primary and then the replica will be taken to the secondary before returning to the caller. Synchronous replication requires that the primary and secondary are up all of the time. Asynchronous replication, if the secondary goes away temporarily, it will catch up with the primary. So let's move on to the after scenario now. I'll start by tearing everything down that we did before. And now we'll work against Cockroach. I'll spin up the infrastructure, which this time will look like this. We've got a typical nine node multi-region Cockroach DB cluster this time. So there are nine nodes. They expose different ports. And in front of them is an HA proxy. With that set up, I'll initialize the cluster and connect to it. It doesn't matter which node I initialize or connect to, but I've chosen to connect to node four because I'll be taking out nodes one, two, and three in a minute. To enable primary and secondary regions in CockroachDB, I'll enable enterprise features and I've got a helper script to do that for me locally. CockroachDB dedicated and serverless already comes packing the enterprise functionality or you can get a license from Cockroach Labs for a self-hosted instance of CockroachDB. Now I'll create the database. The database will be called store. I'm setting the primary region to be US East 1 with other regions being US West 2 and EU Central 1 which correspond to the node localities that I set up in my compose file and I want to survive region failure. Next, I'll alter the store database to set the secondary region to US West 2. In the event that the primary region goes away, the secondary region will be where the leaseholders, i.e. the replicas that control reads and writes, will be moved over to. Let's have a look at those regions now. So we can see that for the store database, the primary region is US East 1 and the secondary region is US West 2, just as we configured. I'll use that database, create the same table that I created for the before scenario and insert identical data. And now we'll run the application. And we'll be able to see from this query that for a given row, the leaseholders exist on replica nine, which corresponds to US East 1. Now I'll knock out all of the nodes in the primary region. We might see some interruption, we might not. It depends on whether there are in-flight requests to those nodes at the time that I knock them out. So we saw one failed query, which could have been retried, and now we don't have the primary region. If I run this request again, we'll see that the leaseholders have moved over to the secondary region. This time the leaseholders are on replica four, which does correspond to US West two. The leaseholders are now present on the secondary region. If I take the primary region back online now, we'll see that the leaseholders have moved back to the primary. And as we can see, the leaseholders have moved back to the US East one region. I'll tear that down one last time. It's worth reiterating that this is all running locally on my machine via Docker Compose. So you're not seeing latencies as they would exist in the real world. But to give you an idea, US East one to US East one would likely incur single digit millisecond latencies. US East 1 to US West 2 would incur latencies of around 60 milliseconds, whereas latencies between US East 1 and EU Central 1 would be more around the 90 millisecond mark. The beauty of what we've achieved here is we've just survived a simulated very severe production outage whereby a whole cloud region has become unavailable. In that time, I didn't have to lift a finger. No complexity around managing replicas, primary standby, and then having to switch them back once the issue had resolved itself. CockroachDB did everything for me. CockroachDB with its horizontal scalability and ability to survive failures doesn't require any human intervention when it comes to failovers. Nodes simply repair themselves, rebalance data, all to survive outages and to provide predictable behavior to users of that database. The RTO, the recovery time objective, or basically the amount of time that it takes you to recover from an issue, will be dependent on response time, run book efficiency, and ultimately humans. The RPO, the recovery point objective, i.e. how much data you can afford to lose, will be dependent on whether you're running synchronous or asynchronous backups and how much data you lose in the period between failing over from the primary to the standby. Ultimately, it makes sense to let the database do the heavy lifting for you. There are a lot of moving parts in any recovery scenario and by building them into the database, it's simpler. The database manages replication for you. It's safer. The database repairs itself and there's no human interaction required in a disaster scenario. Your team will thank you. Cockroach delivers zero RPO, i.e. zero data loss during a failure scenario. And in terms of RTO, we're talking about 
RTOs of seconds as opposed to minutes, hours or days of RTO. That's a lot of downtime and a lot of missed revenue. 